Our last genre to tour is vocal music. And from the very outset, I must say that I, as a, as a tour guide, I'm much less aware of and experienced in um, the vocal repertoire than I am instrumental. I guess it's because I've been trained as a pianist, maybe gravitated to that more abstract kind of music that instrumental music is. It has no words, and it's a little sometimes hard to even say what it's about. Now, vocal music obviously has words. My inexperience, however, means that I mostly listen to vocal music just for the sheer beauty of the, the music itself, and I'm usually not even aware of what of what they're singing about, and I won't be able to tell you in many cases what they're singing about, but I still want you to experience this, <clears throat> this great kind of music. Frankly, of the five genres, the fifth, of course, being solo piano, um, vocal music is my favorite to listen to if it's a really, really good singer and if it's really good music to start with. And I guess the reason for that is that the human voice itself can be so expressive. We all use our voices. We all speak a language. We speak whatever language it is. We don't sing it, I guess, but but we use our voices expressively. And it, it, if you want to really express something, the human voice is the best way to do it. And some of these singers have been trained to be so to have such beautiful voices and to be so sensitive to the music when when that combination occurs it's really uh, can melt your heart which leads me to um, mention something which I haven't mentioned and probably need to since it's the last chance I'll have about how to how to listen to this <clears throat> series of CDs Certainly you can listen to it in the car going to school or with your family on vacation or something like that. The best way to listen would be in your some quiet place, in your room perhaps, with earphones on, eyes closed, really letting not just the music wash over you, but really actively almost uh, evaluating what it is you're hearing. I don't, you don't have to be too actively evaluating, but I don't want you just to be doing your homework and have this in the background either. I mean, that's meaningless at that point. Because on repeated hearings, and I think almost all this music could use repeated hearings, not just Stravinsky or something that's a little far out, but um, all of this music grows on you as you as you listen to it more and more and as you get familiar with it. That's one of the the pluses and the bonuses of great music is that it constantly reveals new and wonderful beauties and and levels of meaning, I guess you might say. So listen to it repeatedly. Uh, you'll have your favorites. You can certainly hear those more than maybe your things that aren't your favorites. And the vocal music in particular, I think, um, if you listen to it in this sensitive, concentrated way, can really help you as a performing pianist. I'll perhaps mention that as we come to some of the songs. Hearing these great singers be so expressive with with even a single note, my goodness, it can be so riveting and really get to you in a big way. Um, that's what we really tr need to try to be doing as pianists, even though it's almost impossible. Well, all right, enough on that. Let's talk about vocal music as a genre. There are obviously different kinds of vocal music. Uh, roughly speaking, I think you could put it into three categories. One would be religious music. The other two categories would be secular um, vocal music. One of those would be the big theatrical productions like operas, very long, very uh, with big forces of orchestras and big singers and choruses sometimes. And the, uh, the third of the types of vocal music is much, much more intimate, and that's just simple songs. Songs uh, meaning uh, a, a single singer plus piano accompaniment. So again, piano is, plays a big role, and there's a huge amount of all three of these kinds of music, religious music, opera, and song literature. We're going to start by listening to religious music, and of course, Johann Sebastian Bach would be a great example of that. He wrote at least as much vocal music as he did instrumental music, and he wrote an awful lot of instrumental music, as you probably know. The vocal music primarily consists of what we call cantatas. Cantata 
at least as in the way Bach does it, is a, um, a moderately length multi-section composition. Now, I didn't say multi-movement. You could maybe say that. Uh, it does have sections. Each section is sort of separate from the other sections. You could, in fact, we'll hear a single piece, a sing single section of one of the cantatas momentarily. And usually a cantata would have anywhere from four to seven or eight of these. So it's a bit like a suite, I suppose you could say. A cantata is for a small orchestra and uh, one or two soloists and a choir. And often one of the, or maybe more than one, of the sections of a cantata would be just a chorus by itself, a cappella singing a chorale of some kind. Each individual section, each individual individual piece of a cantata is anywhere from a minute in the case of a chorale to maybe five or six minutes in the case of, of some of these long aria type things that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hear a good example of that in a moment. So each cantata perhaps is anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes long. Guess how many Bach wrote? Guess how many of these 12 to 15 minute long pieces he wrote for orchestra, soloists, choir. He wrote over 300. Imagine that. Ah, imagine that. Unfortunately, about a third of those have been lost. We only have around 200 of those cantatas. And I am terribly ashamed to say that I'm almost unfamiliar with 98% of it. Maybe in my next lifetime I'll get acquainted with those. Let's begin our exploration of vocal music by hearing a single, a single movement. No, I shouldn't call it a movement. A single section. The reason I'm not calling it movements is because Bach doesn't use the same forms and struct musical structures that the um, classical composers did in their sonatas and symphonies and all those. Um, they're usually just big A B A forms. That's really what most of these things amount to. Let's hear one. This particular piece. One of, I, I guess, maybe a, at least a thousand. I mean, if you wrote 200 cantatas extant, and if each one of them has four to eight sections, then there, there would be well over a thousand of these kinds of things that we, I could choose from, okay? Here's the one out of a thousand plus that I'm choosing. It's absolutely gorgeous. It, you may, I, in some ways, it may be the most beautiful thing on this whole set of CDs. I just discovered this recently. It's very simple. It's for a very small orchestra. In fact, it's just for a single violin, a single cello, and an organ that's sort of accompanying them, plus the singer. The violinist is Itzhak Perlman. The soprano is Kathleen Battle. And listen to this. We won't even have time to hear all of it. It's 5 minutes and 21 seconds. We'll only hear about 3 minutes of it or so. Nice imitative step in the cello. This is gorgeous just by itself. Wait till, wait till the singer comes in. And she is singing gorgeously.
It's like a three-part invention, really. Singer, violin, cello. Each part is equally melodic. I wish the cello were a little more present. It's kind of hard to hear. Well, I, I guess we need to, to move on. There's, a, there's much more. Sorry. I said that Bach wrote two kinds of religious music. The cantatas would be the smaller of those types of things. Uh, he also wrote some extremely large-scale pieces. Uh, they would be referred to as oratorios. Oratorios is very much like a cantata. It has an orchestra, it has soloists, it has a chorus. It's just that it's much longer and has many, many more sections. And he wrote um, several of these. The The two great ones are, and probably these two pieces would have strong arguments for being in the top ten greatest pieces of all times, would be the St. Matthew Passion, which lasts almost four hours, <laughs> and uh, the B minor mass, which only lasts about a little over two hours. We're going to try to sample that one, B minor mass of Bach. And um, Bach was not a Catholic. Uh, when you think about a mass, you think about maybe the Catholic service. But he was a Lutheran. Uh, he only wrote this one mass. It's the greatest by far of all masses ever written by all these other composers who, who wrote masses. And um, uh, it sort of speaks to his genius. It's in 27 different sections, and probably that number 27 is significant. He was very much into the Trinity, and after all, 27 is 3 cubed. And that's not an accident that he probably did it that way. Um, we're going to just sample so briefly. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the text is, and then we'll hear different sections. There's not too much time left on the CD, so I'll do as many as I can. We're going to begin with the very opening, which is for chorus. The text is, Lord have mercy. Kyrie eleison. <laughs> Orchestra, it's like a fugue. The oboe takes the opening subject. And this is all we'll have time for. We're going to try to get as many of these as we can. I'm just going to tell you what they are and what they say, what the text is, and we'll go uh, to another one. Just briefly sample some of these. Next one is the Gloria. Glory be to God in the highest.
Solus Peccata Mundi. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Receive our prayer. He sedes a dextrum patris. Thou that sitteth at the right hand of the Father, have mercy upon us. This is an aria for the alto. Interesting um, orchestra, small orchestra writing. Nice oboe solo. And almost all these arias, as we heard in the, in the cantata aria, begin with a, a fairly extensive 45 seconds or something um, introduction from the instrument instrumentalists then the singer comes in be able to hear a bit of this. Just wanted to sort of give you a taste of that. Next is a an aria for bass. Interesting orchestration here with French horns and bassoons. I think. This isn't the greatest recording. Um, that's the best I could find under the circumstances. The text is, For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. And now to another chorus. From Sancto Spiritu with the Holy Ghost and the glory of God the Father. It's a very exciting one. I'd like to play two more, at least, excerpts. These are two of my favorites. I said there were 27 parts. This is the 17th and 18th. They're back to back. And the text of the 17th is, He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And it's obviously the darkest moment in the Christian religion. Jesus dies, suffers, is buried. And so, listen to the music, the kind of grieving kind of music that Bach writes for this. But number 18 is the most glorious moment in Christian religion. And on the third day he arose again, according to the scriptures, ascended into heaven, et resurrexit. And we'll hear what kind of music Bach chooses to write for that. Here we go with... Ooh, 
she fixes. Sepultus est is the word there in the sepulchre, I guess. He was buried. Resurrected. This is Sanctus. Holy, holy is the Lord God. to the final, the final 27th movement, the final chorus, Dona Nobis Pacem, give us peace, grant us peace. 